This presentation of Legacy of the Goddess is narrated by Christine Larkin for Genesis Global Media. The script and artwork for Legacy of the Goddess was created by artist Kimberly Berg, and it can be found on his website at www.isisrising.net. Legacy of the Great Mother Goddess is a forgotten footnote in women's unwritten history. Recorded history did not begin until 3100 BC, when the Samarians invented the first written language. Nothing is known before that date from written records, except what is referred to in the writings of later authors. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history, from 30,000 to about 5500 BC. Although there are no written records, archaeologists have been able to piece together a comprehensive knowledge of the prehistorical record that goes as far back as 33,000 B.C. Only when women search their historical origins will they be able to understand their past heritage as something more than a broken fragment of male culture. Our understanding of ancient history is generally limited to the entry of the Greeks on the world stage. The truth is that complex societies flourished at least 25 centuries before the time of the Greeks, and these earliest human societies worshipped not a male god, but a female goddess. The history of the Great Mother Goddess may have begun as early as 40,000 years ago at the time Cro-Magnon people made their first appearance in Europe. They were the first early people to look similar to what we look like today. These mammoth hunters lived in small, settled communities, and it's in this communal environment that women thrived by working together. It was also during this time that a harmonious, balanced division of labor developed between men who hunted and women who gathered and cared for their children. Food was plentiful for these Ice Age people, who lived tranquil lives in harmony with nature. Such an abundant food supply gave them leisure time to ponder their very existence on planet Earth. They believed the Creator was a woman, since only women gave birth. They felt all things on earth must have originated from her womb. Since the Creatress was regarded with great reverence, everything she gave birth to was regarded as sacred. For Paleolithic and Neolithic people, there was no separation between what is sacred and what is profane. Everything was sacred. The male role in conception was not understood in Paleolithic times because sexual relations were not associated with pregnancy. For this reason, women were seen as the sole parent of their children. It was commonly thought that the light of the full moon made a woman pregnant. After all, the moon swells, grows round and full, the same way a woman's belly swells throughout pregnancy and returns to normal size after birth, just like the cycle of the moon. It was thought for many thousands of years that the moon and women shared a mysterious bond. Because of this cosmic connection to the heavens, women were seen as possessing a power far greater than ordinary men. In Paleolithic times, women held the key to the regeneration and survival of the clan. Women's power also extended to all life forms, including plants, crops, and animals. All of these powers were encompassed in one divine figure we call the Great Mother Goddess. As early as 30,000 BC, burials became ceremonial. Both men and women were buried with food offerings, indicating a belief in the continuity of life after death. Their bodies were often covered with red okra. Okra was used as a ritual substitute for blood. This was a common burial method which was practiced worldwide in both Paleolithic and Neolithic times. The buried body was often placed in a fetal position and adorned with jewelry, including shells, beads, ivory, and teeth, and their heads were sometimes covered with a headdress made of cowrie shells. The cowrie shell resembles a vulva and was widely used in the ancient world. By 27,000 BC, Paleolithic artists began carving female figurines out of bone, ivory, or stone, commonly called Venuses. These are the earliest examples of sculpture in the round. One of the finest examples of this is the Venus of Willendorf, circa 25,000 BC. Her body may be seen in either a standing position or a reclining position, floating in water. For thousands of years, beginning in the Paleolithic and continuing through the Neolithic era, the mother goddess had no equal. 
Although given many names, it was always the great mother goddess who was worshipped. In artistic representations, she would have been recognized as divine by her connection to the moon. The concept of a great mother goddess as depicted by Paleolithic artists probably had its roots in ancestor worship. There are many depictions of the goddess, including small figurines found in Mesopotamia that date from the late 5th millennium BC, when the great mother was eventually replaced by powerful male gods, women's place in society was also greatly diminished. An earthen burial mound in Ireland depicting the belly of the great mother illustrated the belief that the womb is also the tomb, that in death all things return to the belly of the great mother. The Magdalenian period marked the height of the late Paleolithic culture. The famous cave murals of La Salle were created by Magdalenian artists who had a thorough knowledge of the animals they painted. After the close of the Magdalenian period, there is a break in the prehistorical record. The discovery of Ketal Hayu in Turkey is the earliest evidence we have of a major Neolithic settlement built after the late Paleolithic era. The oldest levels of the Ketal Hayu mound were constructed around 6500 B.C., Ketal Hayu is a major trading and religious center, and skeletal evidence indicates that three distinct racial types coexisted peacefully with no sign of warfare or violence. Evidence also points to Ketal Hayu being a matrifocal society. Usually, mother, daughters, and children all live together in one family unit. The inhabitants of the Ketal Hayu created their own unique Neolithic architecture. Their mud-brick homes were arranged wall-to-wall -wall around a courtyard with no windows or doors. They entered their homes by descending a ladder through an opening in the roof. In later years, the temple rooms, painted with Paleolithic hunting scenes, were repainted and decorated with images of the mother goddess giving birth. Almost every home had a shrine room, which tells us how seriously the people of Ketalhayu practiced their reverence for the goddess. Ketel Hayu was rebuilt nine different times in the 2,000 years of its existence. Ketel Hayu was an important religious gathering point where pilgrims could come to worship Sibylle, the great mother goddess. A statue of Sibylle found in Ketel Hayu resembles the same goddess statue created by the Romans 4,000 years later, both showing Sibylle on a throne flanked by lions and panthers. Ketel Hayu was also a busy commercial center. On the path of an important trading route to Asia, it was known for its obsidian, a highly valued glassy dark volcanic rock. Obsidian was a significant contribution to the economic wealth and well-being of the city. The women of Ketel Hayu were industrious and were the first to invent bread using a special variety of wheat and grain and yeast that together could be made into self-rising dough. They also designed the oven to bake the newly invented bread. They were also the first ones to create a hot enough fire to make kiln-hardened pottery for the storage of the grain. The Ketalhayu people lived comfortably and prospered by domesticating animals, such as sheep, goat, cattle, and dogs, thus ensuring a plentiful supply of milk, cheese, wool, and meat. They created a new industry by shearing sheep and creating woolen textiles. They also discovered the smelting of lead and copper to fashion beads and jewelry. The innovations of women in this time period were inspired by the natural love a mother has for her children. They sought nutritional and medicinal plants that eventually led to agriculture and grain production, as well as holistic healing. Their motivation to provide shelter eventually led to tents and mud and brick buildings. They also invented ways of providing warm clothing, which eventually led to tanning of hides, sewing, and weaving. While early men developed mechanical skills required for the hunt, women developed social skills of compassion and love, inspired by maternal love for their children. These skills contribute to the early formation of a civil society. As a result, Paleolithic and Neolithic women possessed an early understanding of how to create a peaceful and caring community, free of violence and warfare. Legacy of the Goddess can be downloaded in the form of a PowerPoint slideshow at www.isisrising.net. It has proven to be a valuable teaching tool in the classroom and other educational formats, such as home schools.